So we're gonna actually start class just in a comfortable seated position. So um, what a lot of people say is comfortable should be when your knees are below your hips. So you can come into like a cross-legged position with just sitting on your block, or you can come into kind of, I call this coming onto your honkers, like coming onto your knees and then um, leaning back onto your heels. And um, so the block is just kind of resting in between your ankles there. And we're just gonna close down our eyes and spin our palms up to the ceiling. And as we spin our palms, I want you to think about bringing the shoulders up to your ears and just drawing them down your back. And then just giving a slight tuck of the tailbone. So the best way to think about that is if your hips were like a bowl of Walshire, you want to think about if your hips, were, well, if you to tuck your tailbone under, the water would go out the back of the bowl. So just having a slight tuck of the tailbone, that just allows our core just to start to have a little something, something going on. We're spinning our shoulder blades down our back, palms up to the ceiling, and we're just going to close down our eyes. Just taking some nice long breaths. Maybe in through the nose, out through the mouth, just so you can be really present here in class tonight. Even maybe the exhaling out a sigh. And in class this week, I want us to focus a little bit on our own truth. So not in the sense of not telling lies, but coming into our true essence and listening to what our body and our mind tells us, because what our body and our mind tells us is our true essence, who we are truly meant to be. So not allowing ourselves to compare or letting our ego take over. Just being truly authentic to ourselves. So just while you're sitting here taking these nice long breaths, just maybe take a moment to check in with your physical and your mental body. What's maybe your body trying to tell you that maybe you often push away through your thoughts of comparison or let your ego overshadow. And throughout class, when you come into poses, I want you to come back to that point where you're listening to what your body's telling you. Is it telling you to maybe ease out of a pose? Making sure that your ego isn't overshadowing it, telling you to push yourself harder. Or maybe you're coming into a pose and you can push yourself, but another part of your brain is telling you, you fancy being a bit lazy today. So just really take on board what your body and your mind's telling you to do in class tonight. Allowing us to be our true selves. Just taking another couple of breaths here, just getting ourselves really settled so that we can Focus 100% on ourselves for the next 40, 45 minutes. So we can move through our practice with authenticity. And if you have closed down your eyes, just slowly blinking your eyes open. And if you are sitting on a block or a book, we're just gonna remove it. We're just gonna come into all fours. Taking a deep breath here. And then with your full exhale, starting to walk your hands out, coming into a melting heart pose, using your full exhale to get yourself there. So hips are up nice and high, stacked over your knees. We're gonna let our head and our chest drop down to the earth. If there's any tightness in your shoulders at the start, you're welcome to just bring your head to a block. So again, check in. What's your body telling you? Is a block needed, is it not needed? Keeping that nice long inhale, peaceful exhale with you. And slowly just letting your sit bones start to move away from each other so your inner thighs are starting to spiral behind you. Just 
just really letting our chest come down to the earth and if you feel like you maybe can go deeper you can just coming a little bit up onto your fingertips giving your shoulders a bit more space to sink down your next inhale you're just going to look up you're just going to walk your hands over slightly to the right hand side it's almost like a 45 degree angle then exhale resettling down i really want you to think about sending your left hip back as you're reaching your left hand forward so we're getting a nice stretch all along our left side body here we're creating even more space for our ribs to expand so maybe your breath goes up a tiny bit deeper Taking one more breath here, then exhaling, coming through the center and then walking our hands over this time to the left hand side. Take an inhale here and then exhaling, settling down, this time right hip and right hand, we're going to try and reach behind. So we want to keep our hips square here, so making sure that our, our hips are nice and level. And your toes can be tucked or untucked here, just whatever you prefer, it kind of changes the knee joint slightly so if you untuck your toes and it's not nice just you're welcome to tuck them again allowing that breath to run up and down that right hand side giving our chest a bit of space And then on your next exhale, just coming through to centre and then just slowly walking your hands back up, bringing your hands directly underneath your shoulders, coming into all fours here. So just spinning our biceps forward so we've got a nice solid base here. And then we're going to do our trusted cat cow. So your full inhale, slowly start to open your chest up, broaden through the collarbones, belly button goes down, tailbone starts to lift. And then your full exhale, pushing the ground away, tailbones coming forward, looking at your belly button. Inhaling to open it up. And exhaling to push the ground away. And then just coming through the centre, we're going to do our cat cow again, but we're going to shift our weight forward and back when we're in our cat cow. So as we inhale, we open our chest and we shift our weight forward so our shoulders come past our wrists. On our exhale, we push the ground away and we're shifting our weight back. So we're bringing our bum down to our heels, almost coming into a child's pose. Inhaling, sneaking our chest forward, weight over our wrists, and exhaling, pushing it back. So just adding a little bit more fluidity into the spine. And you can do this movement just with your own breaths. So you might not, with this movement, be able to get a bigger bend in the back here but it's just more about starting to work into the wrists and work into the hips letting your chest be really expressive just doing it one more time so one more cow forward and one more cat back and then coming back through to center we're going to come in to thread the needle but we're going to do it slightly differently so on an inhale, we're going to reach our right hand up and usually we weave our hand directly underneath so that it's kind of parallel to the front of our mat. We're going to weave it under and we're going to bring it on a 45 degree angle. So as if you were reaching the same direction as your top left hand corner of your mat. So inhale, reach that right hand up and exhale, reaching that right hand out of the angle, but still bringing our forehead, sorry, our temple down to the mat and just placing your left hand wherever is comfortable. Just getting a bit more of a stretch behind our scapula. And keep that activation in your legs so that idea of our inner thighs spiraling back, sit bones moving away from one another. And your next inhale just slowly unwinding from that 
going back to your all fours, finding that core stability, and then reaching your left arm, left arm, oh, sorry, out to the left hand side, and then same again. We're going to reach it towards the top corner of our mat. Just coming into that 45 degree angle, and then just bringing our right arm down to the mat, hips up nice and high. It's quite easy when we come to do yoga poses that we focus maybe on how we look instead of how we feel. And that is often because we're comparing or we're letting our ego take over. So making sure you're tapping into how your body's feeling in this pose. Not necessarily making sure it looks like something you see on social media, for example. And then slowly unwinding, coming back through. And then just taking another round of just normal cat cow. Inhale to open your chest. Exhale to round it back. And then just coming to find um, a comfortable seat. So if you want to sit on your block again, you can. We're going to be in a seat for a couple of uh, minutes, maybe. Are we coming? Yeah, a couple of minutes. Just check, just check the plan. Um, so inhale, we're gonna reach those arms up. And as we reach our arms up, we wanna grind those sit bones down. You're gonna bend your right hand, the palm of your hands coming in between your shoulder blades. Left arm is just gonna set on top of that right hand here. So you can stay here if this is enough, <coughs> pardon me, or you can come into the bind. Now we are still quite early on. If you wanna come into the bind, left hand comes out to the side, thumb comes down, bend the elbow, and you're just gonna bind your fingers together or even grab hold of your shirt again. If grabbing your fingers is not something you can keep a hold of, but you can grab your shirt, you can grab your shirt. So just taking a couple of breaths here as we really reach our right elbow up. And as we do this, we don't want our ribs to flare. We want to almost think about our the back of our head resting on um, our right forearm here. Taking a breath here and then on exhale, we're just going to slightly bend out to the left hand side. So really important you grind down to that right hip so you don't topple over. Again, we're finding loads of space all along that bottom right side body. So just sending your breath there. And then we're going to inhale, come through to center. If you did take the bind, I'm just going to ask you to undo the bind. It will make sense. Um, and just place your hands back on your elbow. So your fingertips should be in between your shoulder blades here. I'm just going to turn around so you can see it. So your fingertips are in between your shoulder blades. I want you to think about where your fingertips are, almost as if they could push your chest forward. Well, as they do that, you start to peel back, just coming into a back bend with that goma cast in the arms. So right from where your fingertips are. So we just want to back bend from our thoracic spine. So we don't want to be dumping into our low lumbar spine here. And then coming through to center. And then just keeping our goma cast in our arms. This time, instead of placing your fingertips, you're gonna place the full palm of your hands onto this space. And then as if you could push your chest round to the left hand side. So coming into goma cast in a twist. So imagining it's our hands that's pushing our chest round. So just using this tactile feedback of our hands on our body to just really get into the poses. And then coming back through the center and then just bringing both arms down, just doing a couple of circles with our shoulders. So when we come into back bends, that area that your hand was touching right in between your um, scapula, your shoulder blades, is the area we want to be back bending from. So we always find that length and then we back bend from here. We never back bend from, you think, basically the ribs down. We keep that nice and safe. So inhale, reach our arms up, bend the left elbow this time, place the left hand in between our shoulder blades, right hand on top, or you can go into the bind. So this is where I need to listen to my own ego because I can bind on one side, but I can't bind on the other side. So often I try and bind on this side, but I can't. <laughs> I know I can't. <laughs> so I just need to listen to my body and just say, right, we're just gonna, we're not gonna go for the bind for this one. 
So if you combine, you're welcome to. Inhale, reach your left elbow up nice and high, then exhale, ground through that left hip. We're gonna lean out to the right hand side. And know that by not letting the ego or that idea of comparing what other people are doing, knowing that not letting that take over means that you're probably getting a better experience with your practice. Your body's getting more benefit from it. You're listening to it, you're doing exactly what it needs you to do. And inhaling, coming through the center. And then this same idea, so if you could, that there's a button basically in between your shoulder blades, pushing that back and then coming into a slight back bend, opening our chest, opening our elbows. And then coming through the center, this time making our hands really wide in between our shoulder blades and then pushing ourselves. I'm going the wrong way, sorry. Pushing ourselves right to the left hand side. Oh, I am going the right way. Yeah, we need to push yourself. Sorry. We need, whatever arm is basically up in the air, you're going the other way. So my left hand's in the air, so I'm bending to the right. And then inhale to come through the center, drop the arms, just taking a couple of circles with the shoulders forward and back, just taking whatever movements your shoulders need. If you're sitting on a block, just removing the block and you're gonna cross over your ankles and just come into a nice forward fold here. So feet are hip width distance, nice deep bend in the legs here and just let your whole torso become really heavy. Maybe grabbing opposite elbow, we're just gonna sway from side to side, getting a little bit of movement into our lower back, starting to say hello to our hamstrings. And exhaling, releasing the hands down to the mat, releasing our head down, maybe shaking your head from side to side, letting your neck stretch out and finding stillness. Placing your hands onto your shins or higher up, inhale to halfway lift, shoulders in line with your, with your hips. And we're going to stay here for the exhale as well. So pulling the belly button up to the spine. We're going to really roll our shoulders down our back, squeeze our shoulder blades together. And then we're going to lift our hands behind us. So our hands are, palms are spinning down towards the ground. Arms are in line with the side body and the hips. Keep breathing. Then bringing your hands to your hips and then rising up, coming up to stand. Keeping those feet exactly as they are, we're going to have a really solid base here. We're going to inhale to reach those arms up, then exhale. You're going to bring your hands into a cactus shape, so elbows in line with our shoulders here. We're going to inhale to lift up through the belly, then exhale. Keeping your hips straight, we're going to twist out to the right hand side. So if you had your hands on your hips, they'd be facing forward the whole way, so nothing changes with your legs. That twist is coming from our rib cage up. Keeping that length in your body. Taking one more breath and exhale, coming through to center. If you've lost your length, refind it, then inhaling round to the right, sorry, the left hand side. Keeping those hips nice and square, grinding that, that right foot a little bit more than your left foot into the mat. Seeing if that can maybe give you a tiny bit more length and allow you to twist that bit more. So your left hip, you want to think about that coming forward. Then coming through to centre. And then we're just going to do a nice little side bend like this. So keeping your hands exactly as they are, hips nice and straight. We're just going to bend over to the right hand side. Think about sending your elbows as far away from each other as you can. As if you've got a weight on your left foot. And inhaling back up and exhaling over to the left hand side. This doesn't have an official yoga name, <laughs> but I feel like it's a little bit like when you were like doing that I'm a little teapot when you're younger. So it's a great way of keeping the chest open and getting that stretch in the side body. Then inhale coming through to center. And then just like you did whenever you were on your um, feet, we're gonna come into that back bend. So we're only lifting our shoulders, our chest up, Squeezing our glutes, then exhale, coming into that back bend. So squeezing your shoulder blades together, lifting our heart up. It's more important that we lift up than we lean back. 
and exhaling, coming into that forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, then exhaling, placing your hands to your mat, stepping your right foot back, dropping your knee down to the earth, inhaling the arms up, coming into your low lunge. So finding that strong base with your feet, hips nice and square. Slight engagement in the core. We're going to bend our right hand, we're going to come into that goma cast on the arms again. So right hand in between your shoulder blades, left hand's going to come on top. We're going to inhale here, then exhale, start to lean out towards the left hand side. So you should feel this now from your right hip flexor all the way up your body. Keep pushing that left heel into the ground. Even imagine you could drag that left heel back to your engaging your hamstrings. You've got an even, so even more solid base. Then inhaling through the center. And then this idea again of pushing a button in between your shoulder blades, lifting up and then leaning back. So letting your head rest on that right arm. Then using your core, squeezing you back through to center, undoing the bind, placing your hands onto the mat, picking up the back foot, stepping back, coming into your plank. Five steps are gonna come forward, hands are maybe at 10 and two, really pushing out through your heels here, belly button to spine, puffing up that space between your shoulder blades. Just staying here for a couple of breaths, embracing those little quivers and the shakes. Then dropping to your knees, shifting your weight forward, elbows nice and close, coming all the way down, untucking your toes. And then on the inhale, rolling your chin and your chest forward, squeezing the shoulder blades together, coming into your cobra, grinding those feet really far into the ground, and exhaling back down. We're gonna do that two more times. So inhale to roll it forward, squeeze it together, then exhale to come down. Building up that back strength with each one, inhaling to open it up, and exhaling to come down. You're gonna bring your hands out into a cactus shape beside you while you're on the ground. And then we're gonna to start to roll onto the left hand side. So just using your finger as like a wee um, kickstand to keep you up here. So stacking hips on top of one another, rolling onto the left side. So we've got our arm in the cactus shape here. Now if it does feel a little bit tight, you can move your left arm maybe a bit higher. So just because I'm doing one thing doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do it as well. We don't want to have this comparative element to our practice. Taking one more breath here, then exhale, rolling onto our front, bringing our right arm out. So elbow can be a line of your shoulder or, or it can be a slightly higher. So even roll over and see how it feels. And if you need to adjust, you can adjust it. Getting a nice pec stretch here, working into our shoulders, getting maybe stretching into our bicep. Taking one more breath and exhale, rolling onto our front, bringing our hands underneath our shoulders, pushing ourselves back and coming into a child's pose. Taking one more in, sorry, just taking one inhale here, then exhale, you're gonna snake your chest forward, coming into your forearms, untuck your toes, coming into your sphinx pose. So elbows directly underneath your shoulders, peeling your um, shoulder blades back, chest nice and open. If you have any tightness in your back, just making your feet slightly wider. One more breath here, then exhale. Just pushing back into your child's pose. Inhale to look forward, then exhale. Just lifting on your child's pose, step forward, coming into your forward fold. Inhale into halfway lift, exhale forward fold. Inhale to reach your hands up to standing, and exhale. Just bring your hands down by your side, and you're just going to clasp your fingers at the base of your back here. Fingers clasped together, squeeze your palm together. As you do this, you're gonna roll your shoulders back. Inhale here, then exhale with your clasped fingers, just come into your forward fold. So think about sending your knuckles up towards the sky. 
One more breath and exhale, release your hands down. Inhale into halfway lift, exhale, hands in the mat, stepping your left foot back, lowering the leg, inhaling into your low lunge with your right foot forward this time. Finding your pose and allowing yourself to find that pose if your body needs more time to settle in. Then bending through our left hand, placing the left palm in between our um, shoulder blades, right hand on top, coming into our Goma cast and arms here, making sure our ribs aren't playing out too much. Deep breath. And then exhale, leaning out to the right hand side. Pushing our right heel into the ground. And always imagining we can pull that right heel back and we'll feel our, our hamstrings start to light up which gives us an even more solid base. Because this can be quite unsteady because we're moving the weight from the center point. Then inhaling, coming through the center and then just with our fingers, pushing that space between our, sh our shoulder blades to push our chest open and then coming into this back bend. Keep squeezing your legs together, keep your balance. And inhaling, placing your hands back on the ground, stepping back into your plank, finding your core again. Belly button to spine, slight push of the shoulders. And then keeping your knees lifted, or you can drop them if you wish, just inhaling forward, then exhaling, keeping those elbows tucked in really tight, lowering all the way down to the mat, untucking the toes, bringing your hands out wide, fingertips are gonna take that, fingertips are gonna face forward, elbows up, Inhaling to your exalted cobra. And exhaling back down. Do that two more times. Inhaling, roll the chin and the chest forward. Exhaling back down. One more time on that one. Roll it up, really grind those feet into the ground. And exhale, roll it down. This time we're going to come into um, our rolls again. We're going to do our arms nice and straight this time. So left arm nice and straight, right hand's going to come onto the mat. We're going to roll on to our left shoulder. Maybe seeing how this feels now that you've already done it on this side. Finding a bit more space. And if you wish, you can pick up your right foot, bend your right knee and place your right knee behind your left knee. So we're just opening a tiny bit more in the chest. Again, do not feel like you need to copy exactly what I'm doing. If you come into this and you can only roll maybe a couple of millimetres to the left hand side, you just do exactly what your body needs you to do. Taking one more breath there, then exhaling, rolling back onto your front, bringing your right foot if you uh, moved it, and then reaching your right hand out this time, nice and straight in line with your shoulder, and then rolling onto the right hand side. Finding that pose, seeing how your body reacts to it. Then if you wish, picking up that left leg and then just placing your left foot behind your right knee. And then exhaling, just slowly bring ourselves back through to center. And then placing your elbows underneath your shoulders, just coming back into your um, sphinx pose here. And then we're going to use our elbows as a bit of a pivot. So lift your hands up and just pivot your hands out so that they're pointing at 10 and 2. And then really grinding into your hands, roll your shoulder blades down your back, pushing into your hands, and then seeing if you can maybe straighten them, just coming into a variation here of seal pose. So your hips are still on the ground, your legs are still on the ground. If our hips, etc., were lifted, it would be up dog, but we're not doing that, we're doing seal. So really focusing on elbows, under, biceps up to the sky. Just taking a few breaths here, trying to expand through our front body, contract through our back body. Then exhaling to come back down. Just make a little pillow with your hands and just rest your forehead down. Maybe shake your hips out if you have a little bit of tension going on in your low back. 
then placing your hands underneath your shoulders. You're just going to make your way onto all fours and then sink your hips back into a child's pose. We're going to bring our hands alongside our feet this time, just giving our shoulders a bit of a rest. And then inhale, just to come up to seat, placing our hands on the mat, picking up our hips, stepping forward, coming into our forward fold. Inhale to halfway lift, exhale to forward fold. Inhale, grind to the feet down, reach your hands up, and exhaling to forward fold. Bringing our hands to our low back again, clasping the fingers, sending the knuckles up and away. Exhaling, bringing your hands back down. We're just going to step our, to our right foot. Yes, our right foot back. Coming into a runner's lunge here. So keeping that back knee lifted. Then placing our right hand far off the mat. Peeling our heart open to the left hand side. Then you're going to bring your left hand into that almost Gomakasana shape. So bring your left hand just, it'll probably just come to the base of your neck here. And think about reaching that elbow up to the sky while keeping that nice lunge in your legs. And exhale, bring your left hand down to the inside of your left foot. We're going to walk our hand around. We're going to spin all ten toes to the right hand side, coming into a wide legged forward fold. Think about your weight coming in to the balls of your feet here. You're trying to imagine you could lift your heels off the mat. Then inhale to halfway lift. Then exhale. You're going to spin all ten toes now to the back of your mat. Coming into our runner's lunge this time with our right foot forward, placing our left hand out to the left hand side, opening our heart out to the right now. So we are facing the back of the mat with our right foot forward, heart is opening out to the right hand side. Then bringing our right hand in between our shoulder blades and then just leading into it. So it's almost a bit of a back bend here. So if you want to do that idea of tapping in that button in between your shoulder blades to get that tiny back bend, you can. Taking one more breath. Then exhale, right hand's going to come in between, in, bleh, to the inside of your right foot. We're going to spin all ten toes, come into that wide legged forward fold again. And we're going to come into almost like downward facing dog or melting heart pose hands. So reach your hands like nice and far in front and then sinking our chest down. So really grinding the hands down, pushing them away. Keeping that idea of being light through your heels. Then if you reach your hands away, bring your hands underneath your face, inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling to melt ourselves back in. Then inhaling to halfway lift and exhale, walking our hands to the front of the mat, just coming briefly back into that runner's lunge, then stepping both feet forward, coming into our forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling to forward fold. Inhale to reach our hands up and exhale, just bring your hands through to heart center, pressing your um, sternum into your, sorry, pressing your fingers into your sternum. We're going to just come into a nice standing back bend here. So inhale, grinding the feet down, lifting out of the hips, broadening through the chest. And exhale, just leaning back, feeling your fingers on our sternum here. Keeping that space in our front body. Then exhaling to forward fold. And then we're just going to come to sit down on our bum. So having your block handy, come to lie on your back. Planting your feet onto the ground. So you should be able to just about tickle the back of your ankles. And you're going to take your block of your book and you're going to put it in between your knees. I'm going to actively squeeze our knees into the block. So remember we were in our, um, what was it called? 
melting heart pose. We thought about sending our sit bones away from the other, away from each other, sorry, and their inner thighs spiraling back. I want you to have that idea when you're hugging the block, you want your inner thighs to spiral back. So bringing our hands down by our sides, on the inhale, we're gonna roll our hips and our chest up, coming into our bridge pose, but squeezing that block in. Hands are down by your sides like a runway. If you can, pushing your hands into the ground just so your shoulders really push into the mat so your chest can lift up even more. And again, focusing on how this is feeling in your body, not necessarily how it looks. Making sure you're feeling it in all the right places. So even if you could lift higher, but then you'd compensate, compensate sorry, by not spiralling your legs down. Focus on the important aspects of the pose. Taking one more breath here and exhale, slowly lowering yourself down, keeping the block exactly where it is. We're going to come back into that, but we're going to integrate it with that clasping of our hands. So as we come up into the pose, really grinding our shoulders down, and you're going to almost like roll each shoulder underneath you. Now, if you want to stay in a normal bridge, you can. So grinding your feet down, spiraling your hip, sorry, your inner thighs back, pushing down, lifting your hips up, pushing the shoulders down, and then shifting your weight slightly onto your left shoulder, tuck your right shoulder under. It's a bit awkward to get into. And then shifting onto the right shoulder, tuck the left shoulder under. And then if you can, bringing your hands together, clasping them, and then reaching your clasped hands it's hard to talk in this pose. Reaching your clasped hands towards your feet. So you should feel a nice opening in the chest here. Your legs are nice and engaged. Maybe you're rocking a bit of a double chin. That's absolutely fine. Finding that expansion in your chest. If your back body works hard, your hamstrings are lifting you up. Staying for one more breath. Then exhale unclasping the hands, slowly rolling down, then taking your block out from in between your knees, walking your feet so they're at least mat or hip distance, and then just knocking your knees in together to touch, bringing your hands down onto your belly. Just taking a couple of breaths here. And then just bringing your knees into your chest and just maybe doing a couple of rocks and rolls just gently along the spine just to bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. You're just going to bring both legs out in front and then you're going to cross your right leg over your left leg, bringing your right foot into your bum so your right knee and your left knee should almost be stacked on top of one another. You're going to bring your hands together at your back and you're going to clasp onto opposite elbows, so just like I'm doing now, but you're going to do that along your back. So keeping our chest nice and open here, and then on exhale, we're just going to bow forward, so bringing our face down towards our right knee. Keep grinding that left sit bone down to the ground while sending, almost like you could send your arms further down your back, so you're opening, finding loads of space in the chest. Taking one more breath here. And then exhaling, slowly come out of that. Just release your hands. Then we're just going to swap that up. So right leg's going to come in front. Left leg is going to cross over. And then your left heel is going to come as close as it can towards your right hip. And you want your knees to kind of be stacked on top of one another. And again, bringing your hands across the small of our back. Or if that's too much and you'd rather just bend forward, you can just bend forward. Looking to get a nice stretch in our glutes here. Just taking one more breath. Then exhale to slowly come out of that. Then just uncross your legs, place your feet in the ground. We're just going to do some windshield wipers with our legs, just dropping your knees. 
a couple of times over to either side and back through the center and then just coming onto your back we're going to come into um, our climb pigeon supine twist so crossing your right ankle just above your left knee and then just shimming your hips to the right dropping your right foot down and if you want to increase the opening in your hips you're just going to shimmy your uh, right heel closer to your left hip then if you want to continue to open through your chest you can bring your hands up overhead letting your shoulders your elbows and your wrists become really heavy palms spin up so still finding some expansion through the chest or you can have a more restorative bringing your hands either side or onto your tummy starting to deepen your breath a little bit inhaling your knees through to center and then just swapping it up so left knee above right ankle and then dropping your feet out to the right hand side again shimmying that um, ankle closer to your um, heel maybe again just tapping into that deep internal voice not that egotistical voice but that deep voice imagining you could see yourself lying here what would it truly be saying allowing your your own truth to shine through Just practice maybe feel with letting your own truth take over not your comparative ego moving with authenticity and bringing your knees back through to center then uncrossing your toes and your toes are your legs then we're going to give ourselves a hug why not cuddle yourself in so making yourself into a tiny ball lifting your head up towards your knees and then exhale slowly uncurling starting to straighten out your legs bringing your feet nice and wide creating space for your hips and then just bringing your hands to either side spiraling our arms up towards the ceiling so we're in a nice receiving shape here again just maybe going through those notions of what your true self is to you where could you maybe be more authentic? Where could you let go of those comparisons? Where could you focus on the feeling of something, not necessarily what the look of it is? And then just finding a couple of moments here, just in peace and stillness, and embrace this in your Shavasana.